Hi folks, I'm Matt and welcome to the Weekly Rundown. Well, we have got a lot to talk about today. Uh, first off, podcast. I hope you enjoyed uh, last week's Saturday morning Samo Flange where we went through and did a review of Captain America Civil War. Now, if you haven't seen the movie yet, don't listen to the podcast. Uh, spoilers galore in that podcast. But uh, if you have seen the movie and you wanted to hear my thoughts on the movie, check it out. Uh, also, on Princes of the Universe, uh, we talk a lot about just the nerd news update, I think is what I'm calling it. And in it, we talk about, you know, we were supposed to talk about the independent comp books, and we just didn't have time. There's so many other things going on. First off, it's a big news week for comp books, right? A lot of big things came out, revelations on both DC and Marvel sides. So we kind of talked about that. Uh, we talked about uh, casting an e expanded universe movie, you know, what expanded universe characters would play who. Uh, and then um, also talked about Pablo Helgado's Twitter story time about how he wanted to reboot it years ago, the expanded universe, but no one listened or something like that. Uh, anyway, we do address that in the podcast as well, as well as a few other little uh, bits and tidbits of other stories and whatnot. So it should be enjoyable. That came out today. By the way, happy Memorial Day. Hope you're all having a great day. If you're in the U.S., you're celebrating. If you're outside the U.S., you probably aren't. <laughs> you don't care. But you know what a day that you should be celebrating? It's tomorrow. That's my birthday. <laughs> May 31st is my birthday. In fact, the missus already let me open an early present, and I want to show you this. It is a cookie jar. <laughs> it's an Ewok cookie jar. This is fantastic. I love this. Um, we're going to put some cookies in it because, folks, if you don't know, I love cookies, and I love Ewoks. This is like the perfect match here. So I really love this. It was an early one, like I said. Um, I'm not allowed to open up the rest of mine until t uh, tomorrow, but this one is just super fine, and I love it. Maybe, maybe start putting in the videos. I don't know how I would, but I don't know. You may see it later on because it's just, it's, it's lovely. It, it's heavy. It's really nicely well done. I hope the video does it justice. Speaking of videos, there is more Mass Expanded Universe coming up. Uh, of course, we're still reviewing through the Clone Wars, which is kind of tedious for me to kind of go through it because some people are saying, whoa, whoa, Matt, you're getting this out of order because this should be here, this should be here. Remember, I'm using three, I'm looking at three or four different timelines and then adding my own stuff. So it's as best I know how. This isn't the authoritative uh, or the official uh, timeline. It's the way I would read these books. So just keep that in mind. Also, if I'm skipping a book, don't worry, I'll probably address it later on. Now, if I get through the Clone Wars and I miss anything, which could happen, okay, because the Clone Wars has had tons of stuff in it. So if I miss something, make sure to point that out. A few of you have pointed out stuff I've missed, and I will be addressing that. Uh, but in the Clone Wars itself, wait till I'm all done, and we'll see what happened. What were the casualties afterwards? Folks, as for my board game reviews, I've been doing a lot of vintage board game reviews lately, and a lot of you have been uh, giving me some positive feedback on it. Like, you're loving the vintage stuff, right? Uh, last week, I uh, reviewed Chopper Strike. The week before that, Subsearch. Now, I am going to throw in, you know, a new one every once in a while, but I think I am going to keep with the uh, theme of just doing older vintage games and kind of reviewing those because, to be honest, folks, there aren't any videos on that. I mean, when I think about it, there's really only, there's one person that did a few stuff, but he stopped posting years ago. There's another guy who uh, is on the Board Game Breakfast called the Retro Board Gamer. I love him. Uh, he was my inspiration to get a lot of these uh, older board games. But now that I've amassed such a collection and no one, no one does videos on this stuff, I'm thinking, you know what? I should do videos on vintage board games. So it won't be 100% of my board game reviews, but a lot of them going forward are going to be vintage games, games you can't get or see anymore. Uh, so that I'm really looking forward to. Uh, I, I think it's going to be fun. A lot of people have gotten really excited about some of the board games I've shared. Some of you who know what else I have in my collection, like, when are you going to review that one? Don't worry. Everything in the collection is going to get reviewed at some point. But that's one of the reasons I have so many videos lined up, because I have tons of vintage uh, board games now that I can't wait to review. So look forward to that on my board game review. Speaking about board games, though, 
Gen Con did their events. They opened up their event schedule and you could buy tickets to their events. I guess while I was sleeping, I totally forgot that they were doing that. But thankfully, I did get all the tickets of the stuff I wanted to get tickets to. So I'm happy I didn't miss out on anything. But kind of embarrassing that I'm super excited about Gen Con, but yet forgot to get my event tickets like everyone else did. Now, some people missed out on some stuff. I heard some of my buddies who are going didn't get some of the events they wanted. Oh, well. You know, that's what we get for sleeping behind the wheel. But thankfully, I was able to get everything I needed. Uh, I wanted to give you, right now, my top five things I'm looking forward to to Gen Con this year. So let's start with number five. Now, number five is kind of a repeat from what I said last year, uh, in a way, because I can't remember where it was last year, but still in the top five. It's meeting all these YouTube celebrities. Uh, who do board game reviews. Uh, you know, like the folks from Dice Tower, Tom Vassell, Z Garcia, Sam Healy, uh, you know, all those types of people. I, I would love to see them. Chaz Marler, he just joined the network, even though I was a fan of his before then. Uh, I want to see those guys again. They're really cool. I wanted to see uh, Forrest Bauer from Bauer's Game Corner. Really awesome guy. Loved talking with him. Did a Saturday morning salmon flange with him. Uh, loved it. Loved it. Hopefully, he may have time to do another one sometime, maybe after all the Gen Con stuff dies down. But... Uh, to be honest, the, uh, seeing those guys and talking to those guys about board games is really fun. Unfortunately, one guy that I do watch, I watch his YouTube channel because I love his board game reviews, is Callendale. Um, I think his real name is Enrico, but I don't know. But this guy is such an eccentric guy. He's so interesting. I mean, he is the most interesting guy on board games today. I mean, it's just, it's weird. You know, I, I really do love watching this guy's videos. He reviews a lot of what what I would consider boring, you know, really strategy, heavy strategy, not nice on components or pieces, uh, board games. But for some reason, I'm just enthralled. And his his reviews aren't always on par because he did, doesn't do any editing. Sometimes he's looking at the rule book right there with you, and they go his videos go way too long at times. But I cannot stop watching them. There's something about him that's just so fascinating. I, and it's not just the way he looks either. It's I can't explain it, but uh, he'll do reviews for board games that I have bought. I went ahead and bought, but he's the only one with videos of these uh, games, which that kind of got me thinking, yeah, maybe I should make my own little niche in vintage board games. But uh, I, I really liked his channel, and I asked him if he was going to be there. He said no. Actually, he didn't say no. He said some long paragraph that meant no. It wasn't rude or anything, but I was like, just say no, I can't. Really wish I could. I don't know, but I could hear him talking, the way he talks about stuff. I don't know, everything about that dude. Unfortunately, he won't be there, so let me get off that. The rest of the YouTube celebrities will be there, and I can't wait to see them. Number four is also one that I had from last year. I don't know where it moved up on the list, but I'm going to meet Dave Wolverton again. Uh, Dave Wolverton is a great author. He did a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of bo uh, books. Of course, Star Wars books is what I'm interested in the most. I had him sign my Courtship of Princess Leia last time I went, which I was super excited about. Now, I'm going to do what I should have done the first time and brought all my books. So I'm bringing all the children's books for Star Wars that he wrote and have him autograph them all. So uh, he goes by Dave Farland uh, now. I think that's his real name. I think Dave Wolverton was his pen name that he eventually just dropped. But anyway, uh, super, super intelligent guy. Great to talk to. Can't wait to see him again, ask him some questions, and get him to autograph all my children's books. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. One thing I will not be doing is the Writer's Symposium, which sucked. Remember what I said last year? That it just felt like the people who were designing that um, uh, symposium were not orchestrating things with the authors and that some of the topics were off of what the authors wanted to talk about. For instance, Terry Brooks in a world building workshop. So it's not about world building, it's about the characters and building a world around those characters. So I, I, I'm not gonna waste my time on the writer Symposium. I, honestly, every single one was a waste of time, in my opinion, that I, I went to, and I will not waste my time like that again. I'm going to utilize my time better uh, this year. But meeting Dave Overton, number four on the list. 
Now, number three on my list is actually uh, on my bucket list of top board game I want to play when I go. And thankfully, I got to buy tickets to a sit-down review of one called King's Armory. Now, this game came out last year. It's an independent game maker. It's a tower defense board game. So very similar to your cell phone tower defense games. They did this just for board games. Uh, this, it looks amazing. The components look great. The, the towers look awful. <laughs> They're little paper towels. I really hate that. In fact, that's what kept me from buying the game just outright. Well, that and the price tag. It's, it's to get everything, because I'm a completist, I want to get all the little expansions they have, would cost uh, over 100 bucks. I'm not going to spend that much unless I know that I play the game and I love that game. So I'm going to get to play that game, see if it's a game I'm interested in, or see if it's something that I can just pass by. Either way, I am excited to get the chance to play this game, because again, like I said, it looks really cool. It looks really interesting. It may be a game up my alley, and thankfully it's not new anymore, so tickets were available days after uh, they went on sale. So that's my number three. Now, my number two, just going right into this, is the trip itself. Yes, that's right, folks, going to Gen Con. Just the whole trip. I think that would be super fun. Uh, last year, I made the trip by myself, which I, I had fun while I was there, but the trip up there and the trip way back, the drive, uh, it was boring, it was long, I was by myself, I didn't get to stop by and do all the fun little side stops I wanted to do, like I want to eat chili in Cincinnati. I want to go see the world's biggest golf tee or something. A weird sideshow attractions they have on the side of the road. Um, I stopped at one actually on my way down, uh, back back down to Louisiana. But the thing is though, I really wanted uh, to do more. Well, now that I'm with a group of people, at least I'll have fun. I have people I'm going with. I'm uh, Mikey from Saturday Morning Sam Flange is going to go. Uh, two other of my friends are going to go. We're going to have a great time. I can't wait to be able to ask more people if they want to go to dinner. I hate going to dinner by myself. I rarely ate out. I you know, ate snacks most of the time or grabbed something off one of the stands that was way too much and not enough food for overpriced food there. Uh, but I didn't like doing sit-down restaurants by myself. Now, I won't be by myself. I'll be with tons more people so I can at least sit down with one of them and have a great time. So I, as odd as this sounds, I'm really looking forward to the trip itself. That is number two. Folks, if you saw last year's video, you know what number one is. It's, it's number one again. It's the uh, board game library. The library at Gen Con that has just thousands of games you can check out and play with others. And it was the best time I had at Gen Con last year. I learned so many games. And I bought so many games. I mean, prior to Gen Con... I didn't have enough board games to fill up a shelf, really. I didn't really have that many board I had a few, actually, but I didn't have that many. Now I have way more than double, probably triple the amount of games. Thanks, And that's really thanks to the board game library. It showed me games I didn't know about, made my decisions on whether I wanted to buy them or not, and pointed me in the right direction to look at more board games that I could also play. So I was really thankful for that. Of course, there's tons of board games on there that I probably didn't get to see or didn't get to play that I want to. So this year I'm going back and I'm going to play every single one of them. I'm going to have a great time. What is my schedule like at Gen Con? Well, on Thursday, I will be hitting the floor. So if you see me on the floor, go ahead, say hello. Uh, I would love to see you, love to talk with you. You can hang out, you can walk with me around the floor. I don't care. You know, I'm just going to do my thing. Uh, there's nothing really I want to buy, though, this year that's kind of embarrassing. There's no big game that I'm looking forward to. It's weird because last year there seemed to be a lot of big games coming out, and this year, not as much. But uh, I, I look forward to looking on the floor and just seeing a few things, you know, maybe talking to Kerry Breitenstein from Twilight Creations, the creator of Zombies, and, you know, asking them what's up for the new Zombies expansion and whatnot, maybe get some news from there. Uh, but there's a lot of things I want. I look forward to doing there and seeing. So uh, Thursday night, definitely board game library. Friday, I'm I'm going to sleep in. You won't see me because uh, I know I'm going to stay up late and party on Thursday night. But Friday, I'll probably sleep in, go grab lunch with some buddies, and then head on in there. I, I don't know exactly what I'm doing that afternoon on Friday, but definitely Friday night, board game library. <laughs> <laughs> again. Uh, and then Saturday, all day board game library because it's super busy out, out on the floor and out everywhere. I want to be in an enclosed environment, blocked off from the rest of humanity, playing board games. I am going to be a board game fiend on Saturday. And then Sunday, I plan to go back out there on the floor, see what deals are out, see if there's a game that looks okay, interesting for a cheap price. I may pick it up 
Who knows? Like I said, I don't have a list, a buy list of what I want. So, but I will look around on Sunday, maybe pick up a few things if I didn't get anything on Thursday. So that's my list. Hope to see you there. And folks, I will see you next time.